So please let us have this uh, nice applause on a level three for Shraddha Shetty. Thank you. Thank you and uh, welcome today. Uh, my name is Shraddha and I'm talking for on behalf of RK Trans to Cloud. And the topic that I'll be discussing today is once again about cloud. I think yet quite a few people already speak on the same subject. Now, apart just from what is cloud, I would also like to talk about the challenges that cloud is facing in today's world. Okay. Now, uh, I read an article uh, documented by Microsoft. It's called the Horseless Carrot Syndrome. Now, in the early 20th century, when the automobile was just introduced, the banks claimed that the horses are here to stay, but the automobile is just a fad. And in fact, the designer, that's Daimler, who you know, invented automobile, he said there can never be more than one million cars in today's world. But he's definitely proven wrong because there's more than 800 million cars today. Now, technology is going through the similar shift, but like from servers, we are moving to the cloud. Now, cloud not just offers cheaper, but more flexible, more easier, and more efficient way to use IT in today's world. Now, the next decade of computing will bring four aspects of technology together. The first being information, that's data. I think we had in stretch talk about how data is affecting today's world and how data has been collected, the privacy of data, the security of data, and how every information is gathered in form of data to make life much better. And uh, the second most powerful technology today is the mobile. I mean, just imagine from taking selfies to booking your flight ticket on a mobile, booking your hotel accommodation on a mobile. You can do everything through a mobile. And the other one would be social media that's connecting and making the world much smaller than it is. And the fourth one would be shared resources, that's cloud computing. Now, uh, quite a few definitions uh, about cloud computing on the internet. The one that I found pretty reliable was by the Gartner Corporation. Now, they define cloud as a style of computing where scalable and elastic IT-related capabilities are provided as service to external customer using internet technologies. And this explains, this particular graph explains the revenue that cloud is going to generate up to 2020. Now, that looks a substantial amount of revenue that's going to be generated to cloud computing. Now, when we look at these figures here, we definitely understand that cloud is here to stay. But what is hindering the growth of cloud and why is it that you know, accepting cloud computing by most of companies are still skeptical about it and not very sure you know, if cloud is the way to go? Uh, this is the Gartner's hype cycle of different technologies in 2014. Now, if you look at where Gartner has placed cloud computing as throw of disillusionment, now this basically says that you know, cloud is not accepted in the way it should be accepted, and it is failing in many places. And what is the reason for these failures is it's because of the challenges that cloud computing is facing today. And one of the major challenges that cloud is facing today is that it is fairly a new technology. And there are no set of standards that has been defined to explain you know, what, how, and how, the how and to should the cloud computing function in today's world. So if significant challenges can be clubbed in, in these three following aspects. That's implementation and migration, security and privacy. And in third one would be operations. Now, successful implementation and migration is dependent on interoperability, proficient SLAs, as well as security and privacy. Now, if a company wants to migrate to cloud, they really need to look into the, uh, the interoperability function of the cloud computing. That would be the cloud service should operate according to agreed specification, ability to m for multiple cloud services to work in conjunction with one another, and the 
The portability is essential. Now, what is interoperability? Now, interoperability in cloud computing can be defined as a data moving from one data center to another data center or workloads moving from one public cloud to a private cloud. Now, for this to function and for the best benefits to be taken, what needs to be designed is proper standards needs to be laid so that companies can take best advantage of interoperability within cloud computing. Now, standardizations of APIs, data models, data formats, and terminologies will assist in achieving efficient interop interoperability. Excuse me. Now, the next step when we are migrating into cloud is defining SLAs. That's now, what is SLA? SLA is a service level agreement defined between a cloud service provider and the customer. Now, this SLA should include all the operations and the services that will be rendered by the cloud service provider and also should include the performance, the availability, compliance, security, risk, and everything should be in detail mentioned in the SLA for it to function perfectly. Now, the proficient SLAs should also include service level objectives in the SLA must correlate to customer value. A standard SLA would assist a customer to make comparison across providers. Objective metrics terminologies need to make a holistic decision. End-to-end -end SLAs will help managing multiple providers and make any inconsistency. Now, again, going back to the point that because there are not set of standards assigned to how an SLA should be defined in the field of cloud computing, it's making very difficult for the customers to take the best benefit of cloud computing. Like providers can just do not have, uh, you know, they do not have a set of guidelines that they should be following. One provider has its own set of SLAs, another provider has another set of SLAs. So it makes consumer very difficult to identify which set should they follow and how they benefit from the service of cloud computing. Now, security and privacy. Security and privacy is one of the challenges that has been inevitable for cloud computing from the time that it's come into existence. Now, when you go, when we approach to an individual or when we approach to a company in general and we talk to them about moving to cloud, the first concern they have is that the data that they will be providing is not within the vicinity of their area or it's the data will be stored in a third party area, which they're definitely not comfortable. The reason being the security and privacy of this data. We had in length yesterday uh, in talk about how privacy needs to be achieved, how data needs to be secured. And this can be only done if cloud, if there are certain standards again maintained to secure and privatize data. A user on cloud or not wants their data to be secure. I mean, all of us, you know, be it our emails, be it our Facebook accounts, we all want our data to be secured. Now, consumer trust and confidence in the cloud and provided through defining, identifying boundaries of, of responsibilities for security, controlling location of data, multi-tenancy concerns and risk, visibility and transparency, secure removal of data and exit strategy exit strategies and procedures. Now, for example, if we assign to Amazon to keep our data within the Amazon, and tomorrow if we decide to move from Amazon to, to Microsoft, Amazon should have the policy where the data could be completely deleted from their database and we can move towards Microsoft. Now, the third set of challenges is operations, and that is a skill gap. Now, we are aware that when a technology is fairly new, to find the resources to understand what it is about and how do we function this particular, how does this f technology function, the skill set for this is always very limited. And when the skill set is very limited, the operational cost to have them is very high. Now, this does not this actually hinders the growth of cloud computing. One of the reasons why businesses are individuals would want to choose cloud computing is because of its cost effectiveness. Now, if the resources are expensive and, you know, if implementation process, you know, we end up paying much more to keep the cloud, but paying much more to get the resources done, that causes a big problem. Now, the lack of awareness and skills around cloud computing is halting its adoption. 
Now, three ways how lack of skills plays a false for is cloud benefits not clearly understood. Technical skills to implement cloud are unavailable, hence security and procurement are considered heavyweight issues. Now, how do we bridge the gap between bridge the gap of skills? There's if you if businesses introduce in in-house training, if universities add cloud computing training within their curriculum. It helps individuals to understand what cloud is and the implementation and resource process makes it more easier. Now, hybrid cloud management. Now, what is hybrid cloud? Hybrid cloud is nothing but a conjecture of private cloud and public cloud, where businesses can choose what data they would want to keep in an external source, and they can also choose what they want to keep it in private cloud. Now, this, this way, the company benefits in the security and the privacy. Now, Focus areas of hybrid cloud would be difference in design and services of public and private clouds, disparity in architecture and process, implementation of patches and de deployment of services, high associated costs, and management of portfolio. Now, the benefits of hybrid cloud is hosting flexibility, cost reduction, faster response time, IT business, and goal assignment. Now, if hybrid cloud managed management is conducted in an appropriate way, business would benefit a lot from cloud computing. Now to conclude, uh, like I said, every, every technology goes through its challenges, but this, but this not just strengthens them, but also makes them long lasting. Now, irrespective of all the challenges that I spoke today about, the benefits that cloud offers is intense, and that's the reason why cloud is here to stay. That's it. Thank you.